This video shows Rohingya family members pulling their dead children from the water after allegedly being shot by Myanmar police while the family was trying to flee the country and enter Bangladesh to seek refuge. You might have already seen the viral image illustrating a similar scene of a Rohingya mother crying over her 40-day-old infant who perished after his family's boat crossing the Bay of Bengal capsized as his family too was trying to escape. These families, along with 400,000 other Rohingya Muslims, are fleeing Myanmar in the wake of what the UN rights chief is calling a textbook example of ethnic cleansing. The Rohingya people are currently facing genocide and have already endured years of discrimination, civil rights abuses, and violence. So why is nobody talking about this grave humanitarian crisis? I'm Hannah Cranston, and I'm going to tell you the five critical things you need to know about the ethnic cleansing of the Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar. First of all, who are the Rohingya? The Rohingya Muslims are a group of about 1.1 million people who live in the Rakhine state of predominantly Buddhist Myanmar. They have been described as the world's most persecuted people denied citizenship by their country, confined to a small and shrinking area of land that they've occupied for centuries, if not millennia, and denied access to medical care, education, and other basic services. So what is happening to them now? According to Rohingya civilians, Amnesty International, and Human Rights Watch, the Myanmar military has launched a systematic, orchestrated, clearance operation. Now, this operation has been described by survivors, detailing how soldiers raided their villages, shooting the men, raping and beating women and children, before locking them in their homes and setting them all on fire. These massacres are wide sweeping and devastating. As you can see from these aerial images of homes burnt to the ground by the military and from this video purportedly showing burnt Rohingya runes and bodies after an attack. Now, you might be wondering how this all got started. While the Rohingya people have faced persecution for decades, the violence only recently escalated due to actions perpetrated by a Rohingya militant group. The group, which goes by the name the Arakan Rohingya Salvation Army, or ARSA, allegedly killed nine police officers in October and has been accused of hacking seven Buddhists to death, as well as launching attacks on more than 25 military and border police posts and what they claim to be self-defense, which makes sense since they've been systematically targeted by the Buddhist majority. Now, it's not clear that everyday civilians who are now paying for these crimes even support this insurgent group. This violence against the majority group was not taken lightly and UN officials say led to the country's expulsion of the Muslim minority. So how is the Myanmar government dealing with these accusations of ethnic cleansing? They're not. The government says that the Rohingya are burning their own villages, killing Buddhists, and that any Rohingya who have been killed by the country's military are terrorists. They also claim that international aid groups who are trying to help the Rohingya people are really just helping the terrorists, so they have refused to cooperate with the UN investigation into the killings, rape, and torture against this group. If the Myanmar government isn't doing anything, who is? Well, the neighboring country of Bangladesh has already taken in around 400,000 Rohingya people, 60% of whom are children. The Bangladeshi government announced over the weekend that they will be building shelters to accommodate these refugees, but that these asylum seekers will remain confined to camps. Other nearby countries like India have refused to accept any more than the 40,000 Rohingya refugees who have already crossed the border, while the Chinese government has continued their support of Myanmar's de facto leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, who has not said or done anything to condemn or attempt to stop this ethnic cleansing, claiming that the Rohingya crisis doesn't affect them. I don't know how any person, group, or country could see these images and remain unaffected by the Rohingya's plight. The ethnic cleansing of the Rohingya Muslims affects us all. When we let one group persecute another on the basis of religion, race, or creed, we tell the world that some human life is worth less than others, and that we accept the brutal raping, killing, and extermination of an entire group of people. This is not just an internal affairs issue that is happening on the other side of the world. We cannot sit back and do nothing while another country is committing genocide. From Auschwitz to Rwanda, we've made the mistake time and time again of intervening when it's too late. Well, not this time. We need to demand that our country's leaders hold Myanmar accountable for their human rights abuses and put sanctions on them 
or demands a military response until they stop the religious persecution and ethnic cleansing of the Rohingya people. We need to demand that neighboring countries and the U.S. alike take in fleeing Rohingya people as one of the world's fastest growing refugee crises develops. We need to demand that our media give just as much attention, if not more, to this tragedy as they do the latest tweet. Demand more, because we cannot let this happen, not on our watch. Please share this video to spread the word about the plight of the Rohingya people. Follow me at Hannah Cranston, and as always, thank you for watching TYT.